Alright, hello. My name is Sabrina, and this week I wrote a song for and kind of inspired by Zach Kornfeld from the Try Guys. I have many guilty pleasures, but you're my favorite one. You make me feel good, and then go out. So I had this idea to do a YouTube series where I write songs for or inspired by a particular YouTuber and the first group of people that I decided to do it for was the Try Guys starting off with Mr. Corn Diddy, the big corn guy himself so a few reasons why I wanted to start this series I personally really enjoy watching other music producers YouTube videos I like watching people explain their music and what goes into making different styles of music. Secondly, I'm pretty new to music production. I've been a singer-songwriter for a really long time, but I only really started producing music when quarantine happened and after I graduated from college. And another reason I wanted to do this is to be able to find a community of some sorts of like smaller artists and other musicians who are just starting out. I personally don't have a lot of friends in real life who are really into music production. So that's kind of the introduction to the series, so now let's jump into the song. So when I first gave myself this project, I kind of brainstormed some ideas for Zach Kornfeld. One of the first things that came to my mind, obviously, was during the Try Guys tour, their Legends tour, he was a legend of fun. So I wanted to kind of incorporate that somehow into my song. Also, he recently started the Guilty Pleasures podcast with Kelsey Dara and Garrick, and so I definitely wanted to incorporate that into my song. You could say that that was the biggest inspiration for kind of the mood and the lyrics. Also, Zach has a tea company, Zadiko Tico, which I actually bought a couple of teas from when they first launched, and they were great. Tea is also something that's very chill, kind of calming, so that's also another aspect that I wanted to incorporate into the song. I wanted it to be, just have very, very chill vibes, kind of almost like a lo-fi song would. So keeping all of that in mind, I came up with a little melody hook, whatever you want to call it, for the chorus. For, and this is very simple, the lyrics are really simple, but I kind of just wanted to focus on the aspect of getting Zach Kornfeld into a song. And I felt like just keeping it simple and focusing on the idea of just guilty pleasures was kind of a good way to do it and a good way to start out the series. As you heard from the lyrics, the song is mainly just about expressing that you have many guilty pleasures and that, you know, one of them's your favorite. It really could be about a person that's maybe like not the best for you, but you still want to keep going back. They're like your guilty pleasure. But really, it's just about Zach Kornfeld really liking Fast and Furious because we all know that he loves his Fast and Furious. After that, I also came up with another really simple melody to kind of complement that and to go with it. Um, not really a verse or anything, but just like another melody to be in like interludes. For my vocals, what I like to do is to always double them up and also to kind of pan one all pan one almost all the way left and then the other all the way right and that way i feel like it gives it a lot more of like a surround sound rather than just a voice being like pushed into your ears i don't know if that makes sense but i like the feeling that it gives and i think it complements my voice so after that i decided that i wanted to add a guitar track as the main instrument here and for that, I just took out my guitar and kind of laid down a really, really simple chord progression. Again, going with the whole lo-fi theme, a lot of them don't have very complicated chord progressions. They have just have a lot of like major seventh chords um, and like more of like jazzy chords really than focusing on the chord progression itself. So that's kind of what I did too. So for my guitar, I learned from watching one of Cave Town's videos where he duplicated the track of the guitar and then kind of doubled up the guitar so there's two layers of guitar. But then you go in and you kind of just really minusculely shift one off sync. Like kind of just push one back like the tiniest little bit. And then you pan one all the way to the left, pan one all the way to the right, and it gives it a really nice effect of having like the guitars kind of at the back 
instead of in the in the front and I really like that vibe so that's kind of what I did that's what I do on most of my guitar tracks after I was done with the guitar and vocals I had more of an idea of what I wanted the finished song to look like and so I grabbed my um, little synth my groove box right here this is the electron modal samples I got this recently and it is so good for drums my like ability to put drums on this track has just skyrocketed since i got this i used to just sit and stare at the midi for hours not knowing how to put in drum it's so easy because you can just play it right in so i just used this to lay down the bass snare hi-hat and i think the cymbal as well i have separate tracks for each specific drum so that i can play with the effects for each one and then i used the groove box again to kind of throw on a really simple bass line and my ideas for the bass line were originally different to what it ended up being but I found a lot of the like funkier bass lines or those with more notes just kind of clash with the guitar and I didn't like it so I just left it really simple another thing to remember to do is to sidechain the bass and the guitar with the kick drum because they're all kind of at that really low frequency sometimes if you don't sidechain it can kind of clash um, and with the sidechain compression on it makes the kick drum stand out <laughs> a lot more so on, on top of that I thought it could use a little bit more texture so I put in a really just high twinkly piano small riff using my using my electric keyboard so after that I decided that that was kind of like the main vocals and backing track that I wanted. Thereon, I just repeated the main backing track a couple more times. After listening to just the backing track, I figured I could add still a little bit more spice onto it, so I added in this arpeggiator that it's just kind of sitting in the background. I didn't want it to be that loud at all, but I just kind of want it to be like something that you could focus on if you hear it, but I didn't want it to stand out right away. What goes better than jazzy chord guitar than a smooth saxophone? So that's what I did. And I just love the sound of a saxophone. So I just kind of mediated that in some really simple melodies over the backing track. I just improvised that part. I just used the sample that comes with Logic Pro and that's... I, I don't have any cool VSTs for horns. If there are any free ones, I would love them because I don't think that the sample from Logic is absolutely the best. After hearing the saxophone, I thought it was a little bit too bright, so I just EQ'd out a little bit of the high end. It kind of takes away some of the horn sounds in the saxophone, which is what I wanted for this project. I wanted it a little bit more mellow. On top of all of that, I also have this distant piano going on in the background. Distant piano is like the name of the instrument in Alchemy, and I just have that playing the same chords that the guitar is playing just to add more uh, body into the song. So now bringing it back to the legend of fun and bringing fun into the song, I thought it would be kind of cool to have like a big chorus group or a big like, I wanted like hemp fire vibes, like a group of people singing this song at the end of it. I just thought it suited the melody because the melody was so simple. I thought it could just, you know, add a little bit more something to the song and to end it on like a really fun and high note. So to do that, I took, I took the original melody and I just kind of layered like, six different vocals on it all just singing the same thing i had a couple that did uh harmonies on top of the melody but mainly it was just like me singing the same melody over and over again to kind of add lots of layers and make it sound like a big group of people are singing one of the tricks i saw was to try and do different voices each time so i know one of them is like you pitch your nose and you kind of sound a little different and you record it once with that and yeah, so that's what I did. And then I added some recordings of me literally just speaking the words. I have like a few layers of that too. That just adds a little bit more of that kind of everybody singing together at a camp type of vibe. I really like the effect that it gives where it makes it sound a bit more like a chorus is singing rather than just me over and over and over and over again. I also added in a lot of that hey hoes that you kind of hear in songs sometimes way in the background so i tried to do that for the claps i actually did i think like four or five of me just like clapping and snapping and it is hard to clap and snap exactly on time <laughs> for six times so i had to go in and kind of adjust it with the flex time in logic to make sure they all lined up 
with the beat itself so it didn't sound too weird. One more thing, for the chorus group part, I also decided to change up the bass line. Since I did want something a little bit more fun, I decided this was the time to do it since there is no guitar in there. that it was flowing so I decided to just keep it like that but in the interlude parts where I have the where I have the saxophone playing I then went in and kind of used a vocal chop from the verse I chopped it up uh, added some effects on it I put a lot of echo on it to create this really cool effect and then I put a filter on it and I automated that to kind of change as the words go by Similarly, I automated the panning as well for that, so it kind of goes from one ear to the other, and I just thought it gives it this really cool, like, wavy effect. For the ending of the song, I honestly wasn't really sure how to end it. One idea I had was to just end with, like, the full chorus singing it and then, like, cheers at the end, but I tried to do that and it doesn't sound very good when it's just you cheering in your bedroom, so I didn't go with that. I just added in some effects for the last bar of me singing and I thought that kind of added a cool way to end the song and a cool way to kind of come down from the uh, big chorus group part. So that is pretty much the song done. I hope you liked it and I hope that this explanation of the song was coherent and I, I, I don't know what would be good or not. Let me know if there's any other thing in particular I should talk about in the future videos. All in all, I'm very excited for this series. I also have posted the song in full as its own YouTube video, so you can go check the song out if you want. Please subscribe for more. I'm really trying to make this a series and I'm trying to post probably every two weeks. And so the next one of these that I'll be doing will be for Ned Falmer, also of the Try Guys. But yeah, so stay tuned if you want to check that out as well. Cool. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And that was what was in my head and now it's in your ears. And I hope you like it. Peace out. You were